Hi, I'm Troy, and I'm here to teach you a little bit about gardening and stuff. You know, most people, they look at gardens and they think, okay, I have to have a good amount of time invested into it, and I need to have equipment like a tiller, you know, really expensive stuff, a cedar, all sorts of stuff. I'm just going to show you real quick, just with some basic tools. Got this. This is a Maddox from Home Depot. This is what we'll use instead of a tiller in conjunction with this. Now, this is a sickle. I basically use this to extract the seeds that we're going to be using today. The seeds came from a wheat plant, wheatgrass. It's something that's been done for a really long time and that's can I just what we're gonna do also too we have some potting soil because because we don't want to spend a lot of time doing soil tests sometimes you have to buy kits and sometimes you have to adjust your home soil I know plenty of people that have tried to spend a whole year coming in with new soil mixing it with their old, old soil stuff like that we're just gonna use this it's a little different technique These mallets, these are really good for compacting the soil if we ever need to. Chances are we probably won't need to today. So these are the tools. Most of these tools you can buy at Home Depot, Amazon, whatever. Of course this is a composting bo compost box too. We're not going to be using that today. In a different video I'll show you how to do that. So then if you come over here real quick. These are what we'll be doing. Basically, you see these lines over here, here, and then here, and then here, and here. The idea is that we'll be making several of these lines. See, this is already spinach and stuff coming up out of the ground. And I use the scythe to ensure that the grass didn't grow over it so that we still have distinguishing marks. This is the Narset plants right here, right here. I didn't label these plants even though I probably should have, and eventually I will. This was purely experimental at first, but it's working as you can see. Okay, now I'm gonna start working on making a new line. Now some people before they do this, they like to put on gloves and stuff. It's really personal preference. If you don't want cows and blisters and stuff, it's probably the idea to wear gloves, but I'm not going to today. Oh yeah, also too, I can just punch holes in the anywhere I want in the yard because we call for dig. Always make sure you call for dig before you ever do this so that you don't hit a utility line because ultimately you'll be financially responsible for it. It could be hundreds or thousands of dollars to replace it. So what we'll do, we'll just kind of make quick lines. See, this is a real easy tool to use. You just... And using any of these tools like that, gravity is your best friend. All I did was basically lift it up above my head, then use the gravity to drop it down. I used my entire arm length. Creates a lever effect. 
That's how I quickly did that. It's a little bit of work, yeah, but... I didn't have to buy a $400 tool for that. So when we clear this out, you can throw away the grass at this point. Some people know how to put it back. That's okay, I can even discuss that in a later video too of how to put it back. So, if you come closer here, you'll see what I'm doing. Let me make this a little bit deeper. Always be aware of what's around you, <laughs> such as animals or whatever. I got most of that dirt. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna inject some of this dirt that we know will grow things in pots into the soil. This will ensure that we'll be able to grow stuff. Basically because this has been designed to give you, to have all the nutrients and stuff inside. You're really good at using one of these composting boxes and get a good mix. You can use those too. But for right now, I'm just gonna do this. Because as you can see over there, it worked. Now the soil from the pot is a lot blocked, is a much different color than this. Natural soil we're pulling out. So it's gonna make it easy to distinguish. That's good. So what I'm doing is basically this soil in, I'm gonna throw the native soil back on in a pile. For this tool. This is a hoe. What we'll do with this is just mix this around. Soil inside here. What you'll start to notice is that the colors are starting to merge together a little bit more. Always use leverage on your side so these are meant to be pulled towards you, not away from you. So see? more even mix. Looks more light dark. Ideal. Let's try to move. Remove some of this plant light. Now of course weeds will always get to plant this stuff. So every so often you're gonna have to come back in and de-weed. So but we're just trying to get a mix right here. We'll keep those away. out whatever plant life we really can. Now that would have been bad dandelion. Um, basically weeds just rob, weeds rob the 
you have water and nutrients for the plants that you're intending to grow. But no big deal. That stuff's usually found on Google. Okay, now what we're gonna do, we're just gonna plant some wheatgrass seeds right here. Now how I did, how I was able to extract these was these came on stalks like this. I'm giant, rows coming down. What I did was I took this sickle. You grab just a group of them. Be really careful if you sit with your arms like this and kind of do this, strike away from you. And you can cut these off. A few cuts, these stalks will come loose. Do not by any means cut yourself with one of these. You will be put in the hospital with stitches. Ancient people used to use these as weapons also too. They're dangerous. Always be careful. These are sharper than your knife than your sharpest knives in the kitchen. So. so here's how we basically extract these seeds. Well some people have used mallets in the past. I mean it broke some of my seeds up, but so you kind of just undo this mess of things, right? That's a slow way. The faster way is like that. You can just break those stalks apart. See, seeds come out a little faster, they break apart. Now these same grains, if you um, dip, soak them in water for a few days, they'll sprout. And then if you and then if you quickly um, heat them up in an oven for a while and let them completely dry out, grind them up, you can actually turn this into malt extract and use it to make malt for beers and all sorts of things. So you get a basic understanding and then you see how the hammer speeds things up a lot. Start breaking. Now parts of having a garden can be really tedious, but you know, it's, for some people it's very fulfilling. For sake of time, I'm just gonna set those stocks that were collected. A stock to collect those would only take you a few minutes. To. In another video, we'll go out to, to the place where I originally got those and we'll go collect some more all together as a group. But for now, here, if you take a look, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw some of my pre made soil down, just a small layer. Then I'm just going to scatter my seeds in. Now these are really close together, they're weed seed. They're not supposed to even be that close together, but I'm doing this to teach you how to make a quick garden. In a time efficient life manner. So then you can just cover this right back up. If you have really long lines like over there, you'll wanna, um, just use the hoe to cover it back up. But again, this is like small scale. I don't want to keep you guys here a long time. So then we run into an issue sometimes where, where the soil kind of concaves a little deeper in there. That's okay. Just kind of break up some soil from here. If you use a tarp, um, it'll make this process a lot cleaner. But now you can almost virtually cover it back up with almost anything. It's just that one part where we want the seeds to start and grow. Cover it up with some of this other soil, just for good measure. 
Now a little dip's okay for a few days and as you can see here it just looks like a little dark mess now. This is okay because when the grass starts growing up around it, you actually want that to be Now, of course, as promised, I'm going to show you how to run this sickle. Now, doing it on short grass like this is a little bit harder. What you can do is you can kind of do a back and forth saw motion. Ooh. These will probably take a couple months to sprout, too. Now keep in mind all your lawnmowers kind of have one of these blades on a motor. That's how those work. Once your plants get up to a certain size, you don't really want to use a lawnmower inside these areas because, well, you want to keep your plants around for a while. You don't want them to get caught up in your mower. So see, when I hit, I do it away from me. I grab a stock, hit it, grab a stock, hit it. With this, you shouldn't have to use much force at all to do this. If, if you're finding this is not cutting very well or very efficiently, it needs to be sharpened. A dull knife is an unsafe knife. A sharp knife is the safest knife in the kitchen. Just remember that whenever you have any of these blade tools. Like, like this is like almost effortless. Or I can just cut that. Now if you have something such as weeds or stuff that's really thick, say like this or even just wheatgrass, you take it, you grab the stock, and you hit it, give it a good crack. That stuff should require a little bit of force, but for the most part, the cutting edge of this blade, you want to do most of your work, if not all of it. Like, like definitely running the Maddock over there should be a lot harder than running this. You know, or even that quick mallet just and even the mallet, if you just use a wrist motion, that'll help too. But yeah, with these, kind of wipe it off real quick because you don't want your blade to rust because of water. Because rusting will make you have to buy a new one. And in our video, maybe I'll show you how to save a tool from rust. But that ends it. And that's it. Actually, Hi lad, this doesn't end this video. Okay, the most important thing after you water something, there's a term that goes of, was it, it's, it's April showers brings May flowers. I'm gonna show you why that actually is. Let me go start my lot drying hose real quick. Okay, now in this jar, you're gonna notice some seeds that water is hid inside there and it's making new sprouts. April showers brings May flowers. That's what that comes from. So what we do is we drench it. I kept these out on purpose because I wanted to see what the plants would look like once they sprouted. So I could easily identify them in that, you know, in my lines. 
So the idea is that you flood it, flood assess seeds, they'll start sprouting. Some people even eat sprouted beans and peas and stuff like that. It's part of a vegetarian diet. You can do that, and they're actually good. And you can pick those up at most organic stores. I'll probably have to do a video on that too. But, so what we do is the first time you plant any of this stuff, you, you want to flood it and you want to flood everything around it. See how this is just, looks like a monsoon, this is what you want. I mean, you're going to be doing this as much as you can, probably every day for three weeks. That's enough for those. That's equivalent to snowfall right there. But when you, but when you have sprouts and stuff, you have to garden them differently. You know, because during the summer and stuff, there's no real flood waters, right? But there's plenty of small sprinkles. So, in keeping with nature, because you don't want to hurt your plants. I won't go as far as talking to my plants, but I'll go as far as treating them gently with the water. So what I do is basically, you know, I stick my thumb here and... You can buy a sprinkler system, it's pretty much the same thing. I mean, you know, they, they have plenty of rotary heads if you don't want to do this. With some time things, but the idea is, you know, you just want little droplets. That's all you want. It's nothing crazy. Just kind of go around. Okay. All right. Entire garden ward entire garden watered. I have squash, I have spaghetti squash, I have pumpkins, I have spinach, kale. So far in this, and all these lines, I probably have six, six lines total, just with different things. And plus this line with some wheatgrass in it. So, that concludes this class today. All right.